Hi, so in video 1212 we pulled about a Razor hoverboard to get two of these. These are the wheels. They're also brushless DC motors and everybody's been telling me they make marvellous generators. So I've got one and I've taken those off and we've got the motors ready to use. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make a wind turbine out of it. And for that, of course, I need to remove the tyre so that it gets like this. Then all I really need to do is bolt that axle to something and stick some blades on it. Now we went through how to remove the tyre in one. 212 but we're going to do it again. Now fixing those blades because we have a number of choices about what it is we can fix onto that because that's the generator portion of it and we need the bit that captures the wind. Now we've done lots of different things that could possibly do that but for the simplest what I'm going to do is just use some straightforward fan blades that we made in previous videos like this. This is a plastic version I made from soil pipe and if you look at video 1157 I made some much longer blades out of bamboo. It's going to be the bamboo blades that we fix and in order to fix those we need something to fix them onto and I'm going to use this. It's a Y shape that's been welded together and all we're going to do is bolt that onto there and then bolt the blades onto that and of course we have a wind generator. So let's take this apart. Get these apart is both dead easy and dead hard. To get them apart, you undo the six nuts you'll find on the, bat on the back there, which is an Allen fitting, which is really easy. But then the next bit's actually a little tough. You have to get a good grip on the axle with this part facing up, because in here is a whole load of really strong magnets, and they grip. So what we need to do is get it into position and lift straight up. And you'll have to put a little bit of force on it, and if you get it to one side, you'll never get it off. As in there is a ring of neodymium magnets and obviously we can see rather nicely here is the rotor here is the backing plates to it. We're going to have to make an adaptation to this. What we want to do is drill some holes in there so that we can actually fix that plate and of course we don't want to do it with the rotor still in place. If we do that we're likely to ruin the rotor. So we need to get that off and that's how you remove it. Okay it takes no time at all to put that adaption plate on. You can see the three nuts right there they've been drilled and it's been bolted on and that's where I'll bolt the actual blades to on these arms. But it's now time to put it back and putting it back is the reverse of taking it off with one small exception. And I do keep going on about this. These are strong magnets. Now when you're pushing up you've got a bit more control over it. When you're going to put it back on it's going to snap down. So you do need to watch yourself a little bit. There we go and it's back on. There it is bolted on. So I just bolted the blades onto that panel that I put on. There's the motor. Now we have to grip this bit which is the axle and stick that on the top of a pole. Now to grip that, what I've got is this bit of angle plate, and obviously I nicked the grips from the hoverboard. So we, it'll fit rather nicely, we can grip it on the angle plate and then bolt that top of the hop pole and get it up in the air. The only other thing I've done is make a three phase rectifier, because of course this is a brushless DC motor, it'll come out as AC at three phase, so I've done a three phase rectifier so that we get a DC output. Like I said, only thing to do with that now is stick it on top of a pole. We could put a swivel on it, but we're not going to because we're experimenting with it. If we wanted a swivel, then we'd put a tail on the thing, put a swivel joint on, and it would catch the wind. On this one, we're just going to do it by hand to see what it actually does. It's fixed at the top of the bamboo pole. That's the rectifier right there, and that's the fixing right there. Okay, it needs to be about three metres a second. And at three, three metres a second, it produces about four volts. Wowzers. It won't start until it's around about 3 meters, uh, 2.73 meters a second, and then it starts to produce around about 1 to 3 volts, depending on speed. Mm. About 2.3 3 milliamps. 3 milliamps? What's the wind speed? 4 milliamps. No, oh, 4 milliamps. Awesome. Three meters at the moment. 3 meters per second, yeah. <laughs> so that setup that we used with the bamboo blades and the resistive load for taking our readings was exactly the same setup we used when we did this. This is a car motor from a, a radiator fan and it's just an old DC motor. Now this one gave better results but I can't say it was impressively better results. They were okay but not sort of um, 
gobsmacking, eye-watering, oh my gosh, that's so much better. They were just okay. And they were better for one simple reason. This one has got very powerful neodymium magnets in it, and this one has got ceramic magnets in it. Because remember, any generator is uh, defined by the number of turns of wire, the strength of the magnetic field those wires are cutting, and much more importantly, the speed at which they cut, because power is proportional to the uh, voltage squared. That's what really matters. So I enjoyed this because it was interesting to see that this did do a slightly better job, but not amazingly better. And it shows you really that the um, development of the motor isn't nearly as important as people seem to think. What's important is getting speed of rotation more than anything else. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for uh, watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.